Hi everyone, I'm Jess, a customer success manager here at Monday.com. By the end of this walkthrough, I'm going to make sure that you're all set and ready to get your account up and running. So today we're going to cover the following areas. We're going to have an introduction to Monday.com, the different types of boards and its components. We're going to build a board together from scratch. We'll discuss communication tools in Monday.com, then the search and filtering capabilities. And lastly, we'll touch on the high level views and reporting abilities of the platform. So what is Monday.com? Monday.com is a work management and team collaboration tool, as well as a communication platform. The focus here is on you, your teams, your needs, as well as your processes. It enables teams to have increased transparency and accountability throughout each team by empowering information sharing, quicker and more contextual decision making, less wasted time on emails and meetings, and having less things falling between the cracks. If you've had a chance to play around with the platform, you've probably already seen that it's a completely flexible and customizable tool that adapts to each company and team's needs. Currently, we have all types of teams using it for their processes, including project management, sales pipelines, marketing projects, HR, production management, churches, government departments, and so on. We have groups of people using the platform with hundreds to thousands of team members, as well as small teams of 10 users to even solo users. So you can get an idea of how flexible the system is. Let's go ahead and jump right into our account and get started. First, let's start with the core component of your account, the boards. These are our basic building blocks of Monday.com. This is where it all begins. These allow you to track your projects, your tasks, your clients, and communicate with your team. So let's go ahead and build up a board together. To do so, we're gonna click on the plus sign over here. As you open it up, you'll see different template options appear. And you can also search to find more of these using the see more templates. You'll see an entire list of templates open up, ranging from design to education, software development, and more. These templates were created by us and inspired by real teams using Monday.com. These also give you a glimpse of how customizable and flexible the platform is. Today we're going to go ahead and build one from scratch. So let's pretend that today's use case is event planning and I am the main event planner at Monday.com. You can think of events as projects or tasks or even clients to make it more relevant for you throughout this next part. Here, we're going to fill in the name of the board so it's clear right from the start. In my case, this is going to be my high-level overview of all events taking place in 2019. So let's call it the Event Overview 2019. We can also go one step further and add in the description of the board or instructions so that whoever enters this board, it knows exactly what it's for and how to use it. We can also go one step further and add in the description of the board or instructions so that whoever enters the board knows exactly what it's for and how to use it. So I want to make sure that we're all aware of the structure of the board. Each board will have the following components. These are our groups or sections if you prefer. I'm going to group my events by quarters, but you can group them in any way you prefer really, by month, by project, by phases, and so on. This is going to be my first quarter. This is going to be my second quarter. And now we're going to need it to add in new groups for third and fourth quarter. Simply click on the new item over here and select group. As you can see, the order doesn't really make sense for me now. So I'm just going to drag and drop this down. Great, it looks good now. Within each group, we have the items or rows if you prefer. Here, I'll just jot down each event that took place over the different quarters and those that are gonna take place later on this year. So let's go ahead and write some in. Here we have our company offsite. We have our tech conference. We have our marketing meetup. Ooh, here we have a company retreat, another conference going on beach party so you can just go ahead and fill those in over here we have our columns you can add in as many columns as you need to really build a board around the data that you need to use to see and to plan and to manage all your projects we're going to go over the seven core columns but keep in mind there are so many more that you can check out later as well i'll show you how very soon first we have our people column this helps give clarity and accountability that so often gets lost when working in teams. This is one of our favorite columns. I'm gonna change the header here 
to organizer so that it makes more sense for my use case. Once you go ahead and assign the event or the task to someone, they'll be notified about it in their bell notification, in their mobile app, as well as their email notification. Next, we have our status column. This allows me to see the status of my event. I'm gonna go ahead and rename this to planning phase. What's really cool here is while the traditional use of the column is to show visually the status, you can also customize the labels to anything at all. So for example, you can have a status column that represents the type of events. And then here you can click inside the cell and you can add or edit the labels. So let's show you how that works. Let's create a new label for meetup, conference, how about offsite? Okay. The next column is our date column. This is gonna be my event date, but it could be the due date, different milestones, deadlines, or any other important date needed. Simply click inside the cell and a calendar dropdown will open up. Then just select the date. Another very useful feature here is deadline mode. This provides you with a visual indication of when things are on track or falling behind. This is how you would set it up. To go ahead and add more columns, click on the plus button over here. We're gonna go through these specific columns, but I highly recommend that you check the rest of them out in the column center. Just click on see more columns. So let's go ahead and add a timeline. This is really great if you have an ongoing project or if you wanna add in a specific time period that the event date spans through. Once you click inside the cell, the timeline view will open up. This is just a small taste of the view center, which we'll discuss later on. Here, we can see the events visually by date. We can also move the dates on the timeline, we can extend them and so on. Right now, the timeline bars are sorted based on different organizers, but we can segment them based on the different groups on the board, the different phases or anything else. Next, we're gonna add a number column. This is great for tracking any numerical data, such as currencies, hours, percentages, quantities, and so on. This is gonna be my budget for each event. So let's go ahead and put in some numbers. When you click inside the menu at the bottom of the column, you can customize it to suit your needs. So I'm gonna add a dollar. Let's go ahead and add a tags column. Tags are ways to organize groups of items across your boards. They work as social media tags do, but you can use the same tags across your different boards. And then once you click on the tag itself, it will automatically link these in one simple clean view. The last column we're gonna add today is the text column. This is really simple and it allows you to have reminders, to have notes or any other text that you'd like here. So just to recap, we went through the core fundamental columns, but we have so many more in our column center. I really suggest that you join the advanced walkthrough to learn more about them, or you can check that out yourself by hitting the more columns button. So earlier on, I mentioned the view center. Here you can see the different views available, which include a calendar view, file view, form view and Kanban. The views will allow you to see the information from your board in a different way, making sure it's always visual and easy to understand. We saw the timeline view earlier, but let's take a look at some of the others. We'll first go through the forms view. To add it, just select forms view. In this view, each column on the board will become a question on the form, as you can see over here. You can hide certain questions if there are columns just for internal use. You can customize the form, change the color, add your logo. You can send the form out using a shareable link or you can even embed the form on your website. Each response will be automatically added to your board as a new item. This is specifically great for surveys, to gather lead data and in my use case, to get event attendee information. Let's also take a closer look at another one of my favorites, which is the chart view. This is available in the pro and enterprise plans. The chart view lets you get insights and some analytics so that you can make those necessary and informed decisions later on. To get started, first go ahead and 
select the chart view. Now we're gonna need to decide on the type of graph you wanna see. And then we're gonna decide which information from our board we want to view. In my example, it's gonna be really helpful to see the amount of events that have been delegated to different team members in the upcoming quarters. So this will help me best manage and allocate my resources later on. This is what it looks like. Great, so let's go back to the board. So I wanna show you some other features that are very useful that you have on your board. Over here, you can go ahead and subscribe users to the board. This is a great way to ensure that they're following all the updates that are going on on the different boards. So having everyone aligned on where everything stands is really awesome. But what if you don't want certain people on the team to be able to edit everything on your boards? Well, we've taken care of that as well. You can now define who's able to do what on which boards by going to the three dots at the top right and selecting board permissions. Here, you can go ahead and restrict team members and the activity on the board. So we can restrict who can edit everything, edit only content, edit things that are only assigned to them, or if they can only view the boards themselves. You can also restrict certain columns individually, but that's covered more in depth in the advanced walkthrough. Also to track every change on the board itself. You can check this on both the board level over here and on the item level in the update section as well. Great, so we've seen how to build a board from scratch, but just keep in mind that there are three different types of boards available. We have main boards, shareable, and private boards. Main boards are accessible by all members on your account. These members will see all the boards that are under the main section. Shareable boards look the same as main boards, but the added benefit here is that it allows you to invite external guests such as freelancers working with your project or clients of those. You can invite these team members to your board by clicking on the icon on the top right and typing in their email address. They're only going to see the boards that they're invited to, so it protects your confidentiality while allowing you to share important project information with external people. Lastly, our private boards. Here, only the board owner will see these boards. You can also add specific team members to the boards. So let's say you'd like to use these boards for private information, you can do that too. So now that we've just built up a high level board of all the events with some basic information that you can get at a glance, I'd like to show you how you can use these boards for more detailed granular planning. So I'm gonna jump over to one of my low level boards that I've built up for you. This is my low level board for the third quarter. It looks similar to the board we saw before, but here I've added in more columns. Here we have the different stages, which represent different phases. These are status columns that we've turned into phases. Uh, we've got our location column, which allows us to actually plan where each event will take place. We have a time tracking column, which allows us to keep track of how long each project takes us. We have our progress bar and so on. These are all columns that we cover more in depth in the advanced walkthrough. Another amazing advantage of Monday.com is the ability to communicate within context and in a centralized way. So we can open this up over here. This will open up the update section. And here's where we can correspond with our colleagues about a specific task. Inside, we can mention Dana, who's assigned to the task to see what's going on. We can go ahead and attach files and we can add GIFs, which we really love. This section is super useful for notes, for reminders, and for adding instructions as well. We can also go ahead and add checklists, which is really great when you need to add more steps to get a task done, and when you have to-do lists. So to go ahead and add a checklist, simply click over here and write down whatever you need. So I'd like to take you through uh, the notification center. Notifications are here to make sure that you're staying on top of all relevant changes, comments, and mentions on your boards. The bell notification is the hub of everything which relates to you on the account. You'll be notified here of when you're mentioned in an update, if someone responds to your update, or if you're assigned to an item. By default, you'll also get emails for anything which goes to your bell notification. You can go ahead and customize that by going to the avatar, my profile, and notifications. The inbox is another way of tracking communication relating to the boards which you're interested in on your account and to which you've been subscribed to. You can think of the inbox as a social media style feed 
to stay on top of other people's updates on boards. You can mark posts as soon as you've seen them and close them. You can think of the inbox as a social media style feed to stay on top of other people's updates on all your boards. Once you've seen them, you can mark these posts as seen. Great, so let's jump back into our board. Searching and filtering capabilities on the board allow you to narrow down this information to only what you need to see. This will save you time so that you're only seeing what's relevant. Here you have your simple and advanced filters within the board. You can filter out by person, you can filter by column or by group. Then you and your team members can save the filter, saving you guys time and effort later on when you do the search again. To filter across your different boards, you're gonna use the search everything function, which is found on the left pane. To see an example of how useful this can be, let's go ahead and search based on all the tasks assigned to me that are still being worked on. So let's write here, Jess working on it. There we go. You can also search for files over here, which will turn your account into a kind of a Dropbox. Again, you can save the searches here as well. The last section we're gonna go through today is the dashboards. These are really helpful if you're looking for an overview of information across the multiple different boards, for reporting, and to analyze information that you have on your boards. This is especially useful if you're in a management position and you need a quick glance of everything going on. So I'm gonna show you an already built up board of my event planning. Today we're not gonna go through everything in depth, but this is something that we cover more in detail in the advanced walkthrough. I did wanna make sure that you had a taste of it today. So on my event planning dashboard, I've gone ahead and added some widgets that will pull information from multiple different boards to provide you with an overview. Here I have a widget which will show me a breakdown of the various stages of all of my events. I can see how many are being worked on, how many are done, and how many are stuck. Next, we have a chart view, which shows the percentage of our different types of events that we have planned. So here we have our conferences, our meetups, and so on. I've also added in another widget, which allows me to compare my Q2 budget for all my events versus the Q3 budget. And lastly, I've also added in a table widget, which pulls together a few of my boards in one clean and simple view, which I can just scroll through at any time. Again, there's so many more widgets that we didn't go over today. You can check them out by yourself by clicking on the new widget. So as we near the end of our basic walkthrough, I did wanna let you know about some of the other capabilities that we cover in the advanced walkthrough. These will include automations, which will help you ease your workflow and take away a lot of your manual work. We also go in depth about integrations with other platforms, such as your email, Slack, Zendesk, MailChimp, Typeform, and so on. We also discuss the views more in depth and the dashboards. We go more in depth about that. Lastly, I wanna make sure that you're all aware of the question mark help center over here. You can access our knowledge base, which is filled with helpful articles and you can also watch helpful tutorial videos and sign up for more webinars. If you have any questions at all, feel free to send us an email to support at monday.com at any time. We're available 24 seven and our response time is super fast. So thank you so much for joining me today. And I look forward to seeing you all on the platform. Click here for more resources on how to get started with monday.com.